Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to go in depth on the story of why and how the 2018 Dodge Challenger Demon was created, looking behind the scenes at the engineering and some decisions as to why the car turned out how it did. The first part of this video will focus on the idea behind the Demon, why Dodge built it, the SRT team's brainstorming processes, and creating the name and logo, and the second will go into the engineering and development of the engine and how they chose to improve it over the Hellcat motor. So let's get into it. One of the most amazing things about the 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon was that no real information made it outside of FCA headquarters. These days with the internet we are used to seeing info leaks for most new cars, but not for the Demon. It was only rumored that Dodge was building some type of wide-body, factory-built Challenger for drag racing. The first Demon discussions began in April 2015. SRT proposed the Dodge Challenger American Drag Racer, or ADR. Here the goal was to make a street legal muscle car that would do 9 second quarter mile times and lift the front wheels off the ground. It was the same thought process that they had when developing the Dodge Viper ACR, taking an already insane vehicle and upping the ante for use at the track. The SRT team wanted to have 10% more power, so that would be around 70 more horsepower than a Hellcat, and 20% more launch force. The problem was, just that alone would have a quarter mile time in the 10 second range, which wasn't a whole lot faster than the Hellcat which was in the 11 second range. Led by CEO Tim Kaniskis, the team wanted more than just a Hellcat Plus, but rather a Hellcat on steroids to wow just about anybody. Kaniskis would later explain that, quote, Our mantra was nines with light. It had to run under 10 seconds and it had to pull the front wheels. Why? Because nobody had done it. And if you do it, then the Camry buyer reads the headlines and says, they just built a car that pulls a wheelie. Now you got my attention. End quote. So as Kaniskis alluded to, the 9s with light means that the car can run a 9 second quarter mile time with daylight under the tires, which means that the car lifted the front tires off the ground on launch, aka did a wheelie. From that point forward, everything about the Demon's development, from power to suspension to weight, would be done in pursuit of that goal. So with that goal in mind, the Demon was brought before the FCA Corporate Planning Committee, and the Demon team officially got the green light for production in September 2015, even though FCA CEO Sergio Marchione told the development team, you guys are crazy. There was a tight time frame of less than two years for this thing, so the team couldn't consider time-consuming and costly modifications like all-wheel drive or a dry sump system, and had to stick with the traditional wet sump rear-wheel drive. As I said from the start, the Demon's development was a closely guarded secret. There were even some with an SRT that didn't know about the project. The people behind the car went through a lot of effort to keep it that way. It was a top secret mission that was carried out by a small team of just 10 people to minimize information that was spreading out to auto writers. All the meetings were classified in private, and in FCA's computerized scheduling system, it just listed the car as the special edition. There were lots of people wondering why there were so many meetings to discuss a special edition car that didn't have a name, but it was all in an effort to prevent any information from leaking in advance. SRT engineers worked at weird hours, like nights and weekends. Part suppliers were told as little as possible. For example, they told the people that were making the fuel system only that they needed a dual pump system with a certain flow level. They told the supercharger company just an airflow number and nothing else. This way, no one could piece together what the team was working on or let the cat out of the bag on what they were making for Dodge and why. Kaniskis explained that the team would meet every two weeks, with each decision driven by nines with light. That explains why every last dollar from the budget was put into performance. The Demon was supposed to have a new interior and a detachable sway bar, but that money was invested into developing the trans brake, power chiller, and after run chiller instead. To keep the Demon secret from the other FCA employees, the team wanted to use a low key code name, unlike Apache or Hellcat, which drew too much attention to them. The codename used for the Demon Engine was a blue cat named Benny, because that was Chris Cowlin's favorite character from the American sitcom Top Cat. The SRT team wanted to paint the engine block blue as well to match the cat, but weirdly enough there wasn't a heat and corrosion resistant blue paint in the entire company that would meet the internal requirements, so they went with a red engine paint instead which they already had on hand. Cowlin was instrumental in developing both the Hellcat and the Demon, as he was the director of advanced and SRT powertrain for Fiat Chrysler. Hiding the noisy, monster supercharged engine when using the dyno was an entirely different challenge. FCA dyno labs are busy, so the Benny engineers would only work with the dyno on Saturday and Sunday nights with just a few folks around. Another thing that had to be done was recalibrate the dyno lab cells to understate the readings on the screen. This way, should anyone sneak a look, it just looked like a Hellcat motor was being worked on, showing 707 horsepower, not 808 or 840. 
Running the Demon engine at peak power also caused a shortage of fuel in the engines in the other Dino Lab cells because it was using so much from the fuel supply outside. The many quarter mile trials were done in Gainesville, Florida at a drag strip where the track workers were forced to sign non-disclosure agreements but still Dodge disguised the Demon to make it look like they were just testing it randomly with other Dodge products. As the car got closer to the final version, there were some spy photos, but you couldn't tell anything power or performance related, as it just looked like a Hellcat with the wide body added on. Finally, possibly the best kept secret during development was the final power numbers. Advanced press materials listed, quote, horsepower TBD, torque TBD, quarter mile TBD, seconds at TBD miles per hour, end quote. So even most of the Demons build team didn't learn what these numbers were until just an hour before the debut of the car in New York City, and only 35 people within the entire FCA organization knew when the car was being rolled out of its cage. They had over 198,000 employees in 2018, just to put that into perspective. Of course, this Challenger needed a new name and logo to differentiate it from the Hellcats. Originally, they were going to use the American Drag Racer name as we went over, calling it the Dodge Challenger ADR, and early spy shots were labeled as such. I've heard some conflicting stories that make it unclear whether Dodge felt that they needed to use something more exciting and change their minds on the name, or they just used ADR to confuse people and were planning on using Demon the entire time. Here's Tim Kaniskas explaining that ADR wasn't going to be enough woe for the brand. So the Demon nameplate was revived, which had been a two-door fastback coupe variant of the 1971-1972 Dodge Dart, and also used for a 2007 concept car. All the American Stellantis brands have internal designers dedicated to the development of logos and emblems that make each vehicle unique, and they've got to get it right. Mark Trossel, the head of design for Dodge and SRT, talked about the SRT Demon logo, and you can find his words on screen. The team started with the 1971 Dodge Demon logo, but they thought it wasn't sinister enough, saying that it looks like Casper the Friendly Ghost with a pitchfork. They tried to keep the nostalgia of the old logo, and they did consider a modern iteration of a pitchfork and skulls. But above all, they wanted something with its own identity. As Trossel says, quote, We looked all over the place, things with horns, etc. Then the light bulb kind of came on, and we said, What if we take the SRT Hellcat logo, which is already aggressive looking, what if it evolves and changes? The SRT Demon was built off the SRT Hellcat, so there's definitely a family resemblance of the two. End quote. You can definitely see they are similar, and they did a great job making sure both were menacing looking, but also a bit different from each other as well. Now for the rest of the video, I'll go through the major upgrades and components that the engineers wanted to include to improve the Demon and set it apart from a Hellcat. That will include things like the fuel system, supercharger, air intake, heat soak, weight, driveline, launching, suspension, tires, and transmission. The SRT team has said that getting more power out of the Hellcat was easy, but the hard part was making the engine reliable for mass production and emissions compliant. Of course, they were also developing this engine, keeping in mind that they would use it in the future Hellcat Red Eyes as well. Every Hellcat and Demon engine is tested on the dyno for 42 minutes under load before it's shipped out for assembly. Many ideas were also shot down by FCA lawyers, as this was to be a production vehicle. That's why the Demon Crate was a $1 extra add-on. Technically, it was an aftermarket accessory, even though they wanted to outfit the car with those features directly, but couldn't legally. But still, it was significantly upgraded, with 62% new content compared to the Hellcat V8. The Demon also set some records at the time, like being the highest horsepower V8 production car ever produced, and having the world's fastest quarter mile production car, with an elapsed time of 9.65 seconds and 140 miles per hour, as certified by National Hot Rod Association, and it was the world's fastest 0-60 to production car in 2.3 seconds, both of those as of 2018. The Demon also has a massive list of street legal production car industry firsts, and they even set a world record for the longest wheelie from a standing start by a production car at 2.92 feet, certified by Guinness World Records. The Demon had an output of 808 horsepower and 717 pound-feet of torque when running 91 octane pump gas, an increase of 101 horsepower and 67 pound-feet of torque over the Hellcat. SRT got creative with their Demon crate that came with the car, adding arguably the most important feature, a direct connection powertrain control module that was calibrated for 100 plus octane fuel, and a new switch bank for the center stack that includes your high octane button. That upped the horsepower to 840, 133 more than the Hellcat, and 770 pound-feet of torque, which was a 120 pound-feet increase. The SRT team thought of it all, use the 100 octane plus when you need it and when it might be more readily available at the drag strip, but you're still able to use 91 octane anywhere else. 
The Demon is also engineered to be able to run on a mix of 100 plus octane and premium unleaded fuels without hurting the engine. Just the high octane function won't activate if the combined fuel octane is too low, with a message popping up in the display to tell you. The Demon also uses dual fuel pumps versus one pump in the Challenger SRT Hellcat, and larger fuel injectors and fuel lines that handle higher pressures, a 27% increase in fuel pressure over a Hellcat. There's not enough time in this video to get super specific, but the SRT team did upgrade 25 major components from the Hellcat engine, as we said earlier, 62% new content, including the supercharger, pistons, rod, valve train, and more. One major upgrade was going from a 2.4 liter to a larger 2.7 liter supercharger, allowing for increased boost pressure from 11.6 PSI to 14.5 PSI. Another important factor was to increase the air intake, and that's why SRT added the massive air grabber hood, the largest functional hood scoop of any production car, with 45.2 square inches. The air grabber hood is sealed to the airbox, which is also fed from the driver's side air catcher headlamp and an inlet near the wheel liner. Combined, these sources give the Demon V8 an airflow rate of 1,150 cubic feet per minute. That's 18% greater than the Hellcat V8, and also the largest air induction volume of any production car. Next, related to the air intake was heat soak, and these Hemis generate a lot of heat, which does not help your drag strip times. The additional air inlets help to reduce the temperature of the intake by more than 30 degrees Fahrenheit compared to the Hellcat V8, which improves the overall throttle response. SRT also got more innovative with the SRT power chiller, essentially flowing chilled coolant to the heat exchangers in the supercharger. That cools the charged air by 18 degrees Fahrenheit before it enters the combustion chamber. The power chiller alone is responsible for 15 horsepower. Then, after your run, they made the after-run chiller, to help the Demon get ready for the next run, keeping the engine cooling fan and low temperature circuit cooling pump running to lower the supercharger and the charge air cooler temperature, and that helps the Demon minimize the heat soak effects. It's not random either, as the SRT performance pages will tell you in real time when the supercharger is at the optimum temperature for another run. We've covered power, fuel, air, heat, and next on the team's list was weight. Generally, a 100 pound reduction is worth a tenth of a second reduction in quarter mile estimated times, so the engineers looked for any weight cuts that they could make here. The list is as follows on screen, with the bulk of it coming from the seats, audio system, and trunk. The standard configuration came with just a driver's seat. Overall, they were able to drop 232 pounds here when compared to a Hellcat widebody, but of course buyers could add back the interior luxuries, like $1 each for the front passenger seat, rear seats, and the trunk carpeting kit, or other packages as well. Another often overlooked aspect is the driveline, so this one got an upgraded prop shaft, enhanced rear differential, 3.09 rear axle ratio, larger rear 41 spline half shafts, and more, all to make sure people weren't blowing up their rear ends, and also getting the power to the wheels easier. The launch assist feature was added to try to tackle the problem of wheel hop, using wheel speed sensors to watch for signs that the tires are slipping or sticking. And if they are, the SRT Demon will reduce the engine torque to maximize traction almost instantly without the driver having to lift, so that'll reduce the wheel hop and prevent driveline damage. So now the Demon has all this power, and they needed to get it down to the wheels, with a major problem for all the Hemis being wheel spin and a challenge to get the car to hook. The first part of that involves direct contact with the road surface, the tires. Dodge was the first to include street legal drag radials on a factory production car, giving the Demon 31540R18 Nitto NT05Rs that were specifically designed and developed exclusively for the SRT Demon with a new compound and specific tire sidewall construction. The drag radials give the SRT Demon a 15% larger tire contact patch and more than twice the grip of the Challenger SRT Hellcat. They're also the reason behind the addition of the 3.5 inch wider fender flares as those add to the width of the car without having the tires extend way beyond the fenders. They used lighter 18x11 inch wheels to replace the 20s found on the Hellcats, and the Demon Crate also gives a set of narrow front runners for the track. The other key component here is the suspension. First, the unique rear knuckle reduces negative camber by 0.5 degrees, standing up the tire and increasing the size of the tire contact patch. The SRT team also retuned the Bilstein adaptive damping shocks for drag racing, shifting as much weight as possible on the rear tires at the launch for maximum traction, so they say it improves the rear tire grip by 11%. Other parts were tweaked, like softer springs, and softer, lighter, hollow sway bars, which save some weight. The Demon also has different SRT drive modes, including a drag mode, the details of which are shown on screen now. It changes the suspension, as well as many other factors, like shifting, steering, and the torque converter lockup point. We also can't forget about the transmission. 
Well, it does have the same 8 HP 90 8 speed automatic as a Hellcat. Internal changes include an upgraded torque converter with an 18% increase in torque multiplication, while the stall speed is increased 11%, and the lockup speed is increased as well. The RPM limit goes up to 6500 RPM from 6200 on a Hellcat. Dodge also created a trans brake feature that locks the transmission output shaft to hold the car in place before a standing start. I'll put more details on screen, but this feature helps to improve driver reaction time by 30% by using the steering wheel paddle shifters to launch instead of the foot brake. It also enables torque within 20 milliseconds after the launch. Trans brake works with torque reserve, another feature that becomes active at 950 RPMs, and that pre-fills the supercharger with boost and manages fuel flow and spark advance or retard. Dodge says with both the features active, the Demon has 8 PSI of boost at launch and 120% more engine torque than without, and they estimate that the features combine to improve 1 to 2 tenths of a second in the quarter mile over an entire car length. So that's it for this video, hopefully you enjoyed checking out the origins of the Dodge Demon and how the car and engine came to be. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.